Welcome to the African Album Review Podcast, where we review Africa's best and latest music projects. Africa, Muri say. My name is MJ Omoto, and in the next few minutes, I'm going to give you a rundown of The Bunch, The Entertainer, The Sequel. The clock starts now. The latest African album review is... How The Entertainer, The Sequel, starts is just epic. Dibanj doesn't waste time in taking us back to one of his biggest hits and you know the whole Coco vibe by doing a rendition for the first 41 seconds before it gets into a modern twist that is absolutely sweet to the ear. The nostalgia really hit me because I instantly recognized the familiar number and this is considering that I haven't even played the original track in years in years but the lyrics instantly came back to me and i was singing along the track sounds full and debunge himself is sounding confident and ready to rock but to be fair confidence hasn't been a problem for debunge anyway this guy has been confident ever since it's great to hear the playfulness of debunge with the ladies so you know great way to start the album as you get into track two which is color with awilo lungumba who is a legend on the continent, of course. You get that different vibe. It actually continues on the smooth type of vibe. And th this song sort of misled me because I was like, it's got a willow lungumba. And um, it's probably going to be on the, uh, you know, uh, suku type of vibe or whatever. Nope, it's not. <laughs> and even the delivery by a willow was different. And as I moved to track three, I started to really connect with that feel good element that was on display yours truly is the title of track three and it's alongside Fino. and two phrases to describe it sing along and feel good i couldn't help but notice that the og was starting the songs off melodiously with plenty of singing harmonies and happiness and that's what you get probably uh in the first maybe four or five tracks thereabouts and on the song since 04 same thing this one incorporates that afrobeat side of things with log drums all over it that style establishes the connection between the artist and the newer audience uh, that is primed for such a sound and it will be interesting to see how this song in particular can find resonance with the new blood of listeners because I really think this is the song that could actually endear him to a younger crowd. It also has the Ashake crowd chorus vibe. So you know how that goes. Watch out for this song. When Dibanj mentioned the Cocolets on Peaky Blinders, it made me smile because of the nostalgia again. And particularly for such a smooth number where you're probably tapping your feet and nodding your head. I think you can pick a few songs on the Entertainer the sequel where the choruses maybe felt like Dibanj could have done more, maybe added more elements or voices in particular to give the choruses more of a chorus feel. It's a hard one to explain, but it's there on some songs. There were some really good collabs throughout, whether unexpected like Awilo Nungumba. I love saying that. Or uh, the one with Akon and Eskies. It was cool seeing some recognizable names, also including Wyclef Sean, Yusundo, and then others. I didn't know others, such as Chechi Sarai, who is Nigerian American, but um, yeah, very talented. On that note, when I actually thought things were getting a little bit, you know, stale in the middle, the song that saved that listening experience for me was I'm Legend with Wycliffe Jean, which feels like this eclectic mix of Jersey Club, Drill and Trap. I actually liked it, to be honest. This does demonstrate how powerful it can be for a musician to try something new, it won't work all the time, guaranteed, but when it does, you could stumble across absolute gold, so well done on that debunch. Sometimes the reliance on old hits, lyrics, and old flows could be a point of letdown on this album. There's a fine line between invoking nostalgia and leaning on the past too much. At the same time, I think he was walking us through 
almost like a journey of uh, how much he's done in his career and how much he's achieved and how much he's impacted people through his music. And I totally understand that this will likely differ from listener to listener, but I kind of felt the monotony the more the album progressed. Uh, you tend to feel this lyrically more so that there's a time capsule of some sort that debanges in in terms of subject matter and expression as well. It is very hard to let go of a formula that's worked. It goes without saying, but occasionally there were great displays of rich Nigerian culture within this album, exploring many facets of it, albeit in instrumentation or language. And that's always a winner with the Nigerian crowd. So I thought that was a good move. With all being said and done, in conclusion, this is a wonderful album for DeBange fans of old and anyone that has been following him for a while now. I don't think this album will propel DeBange to the top of the game as it is. We simply have new kings and queens on the throne now and it'll be hard to see this project defy all odds on that front. In many ways, the Entertainer the sequel is perfect for where DeBange is in his long illustrious career and showcases that in its makeup. I like that he kept it at 13 tracks, running a little over 38 minutes in total, easy to listen to in one sitting, and long enough to feel like a complete album. He gets my respect for staying true to himself and giving us a slice of those golden years linking where he's come from to where he is now. I found it hard to pick out any standout tracks to be honest, since 04 obviously being um, the one that I think could be the one that transcends age just because of its makeup as I explained earlier, maybe track 1, Coco, especially given it has a really dope video that's out there right now, stunning visuals, amazing visuals. Notwithstanding that these songs have already been released uh, prior to the album and have been out for you know a month or two. The other song I mentioned, which is I'm Legend with Wycliffe Sean, is the outlier for me which stands out. It likely won't be a hit in any regard, but I think it could really bubble under in many sort of niche crowds that like that edm -y type of vibe. And you never know. Be that as it may. For the people that have loved Debunge and been yearning for something significant from him, this is THE album. And they would probably give this one an 8, maybe 8.5 out of 10. If I look at the current landscape of music, trends, what the prime listener is expecting on the African front, that score likely drops down to between 6.5 and 6.8. And before I dip, do check out my website, mjwemoto.com, which is mjwemoto.com. Otherwise, that's it from me. My name is M. Jomoto, son of Zimbabwe, signing out. Peace. Dende. This podcast is hosted by MJ.